today on Top Gear Rearview, Brady has a good idea for the future. I really need to take a recording and just do one episode where it's just you going, Durr! and Jeff battles his hoodie. Mother f- Sorry, my hoodie just decided to destroy its zipper. F- you f- hoodie, this is why you don't get any rotation. God damn it. <laughs> it's, it's just, just the worst. Get down, you f- Hello and welcome to Top Gear Rearview. I'm Jeff, that's Brady. Tonight we are looking back at Series 3, Episode 6 of the new Top Gear. This episode aired on the 7th of December in 2003, and the star in a reasonably priced car was Sanjeev Baskar. And uh, in this episode, we are looking at the new Citroen C2, uh, comparing a pair of convertible coupes, is what we think it stands for, the Renault Megane CC and the Peugeot 307 CC. Uh, looking back at an awesome old Aston Martin V8 Vantage in 1977, to be exact. Uh, checking out the Holden Monaro, which our U.S. listeners will know as the Pontiac GTO. And finally, we uh, we give one more shot at uh, destroying that poor old Hilux before uh, closing out the episode. I mean, that was the whole quote-unquote challenge of this episode. And it really, they just jammed it right in the last, like, 35 seconds. Yeah, it was kind of annoying because they tease it right up front and they show like almost all of it, and then they nope. They did actually at least make a joke about not having people uh, log on or head over to another channel. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I can appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. So, Citroen, tiny little modification car it seems for uh, cruising, winding, and flexing. Yeah, you know, get a little bit of flexing going on, a little bit of winding. I like to do that yeah. in my off time. How about you, Jeff? Yeah, me too. It's, you go uh, out with all your. Uh, bus to motorhome conversion buddies and go flexing. <laughs> yeah, we need we need a big parking lot for that particular <laughs> meetup. Yeah, um, it's it's almost always, if not required, to be at a Walmart parking lot. Yeah, I think you can stay overnight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, exactly. Uh, Cabela's are better. They they are nicer there. But anyway, so this Citroen C2, this is the replacement for the Saxo, the outgoing model, and this is just the. I mean, it's a Citroen. I don't know. Have you did you drive a Citroen when you were over there? Or have any interaction with one? I mean, I saw them. I did not ever set foot in one or drive one. Uh, I drove Fords and Nissan and Renault and Peugeot, but never a Citroen. Never a Citroen. Never got the French one. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't. Mean, I mean. Yeah, I mean Renault and Peugeot. <laughs> oh, I guess Renault is too. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. And Peugeot is Peugeot. I thought. Anyway, extremely, I'm dumb. Extre- extremely French. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, they did have some interesting. Th- I mean, so the, the the point of this is basically saying, yeah, it's a new small uh, coupe. It's uh, you can get it in the 1.1 liter variant. You can get a diesel that'll get 78 miles per gallon, or you can get a 1.6 liter hot version. Uh, but the the general kind of thing is they showed a lot of little what look like just nighttime car meets with the. Uh, with kind of bros hanging out with their Fast and Furious cars. Yeah, I mean, this uh, appears to be the 1993 to 94 Honda Accord Civic, sorry, Honda Civic hatchback of oh, the yeah. UK. Yeah, I was going to say CRX or something, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's a, I mean, the CRX, I guess, would be the hot version or maybe the more expensive one. But this normal run-of-the-mill C2 is just the, the small, cheap, you know, still relatively good and... Uh, parts wildly available for car uh for the younger generation what yeah. J- J- jeremy said that it was for the thrusting young men <laughs> just a great adjective just there. thrust in their way <laughs> flexing and winding around oh yeah it's uh the, the one of the things that did interest me is they mentioned that they're popular because they get free insurance yes they offer free insurance which i was that's not a thing in the states Uh-oh. like that's never and really an option when you buy a new car and i could see that especially for a younger guy being super appealing yeah i mean i think jeremy even said later on that the free insurance is uh for young teenage men is more important than girls like yeah it's so expensive to get insured anywhere as a 16 17 year old boy yeah, yeah. I got to imagine that it's uh, that that's a big sell. So I, I mean, think it back. Like that's I, I obviously have a little bit different of an insurance burden at my age and with my ridiculous vehicle habits, but uh, it's a good chunk of change. I could see that being pretty appealing. Yeah, I can't imagine just not paying insurance for my everyday car. It'd be real nice. Yeah, yeah it'd be wonderful. I mean, it's a couple hundred a month for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, 
Anyway, the uh, I did get one. I pulled one interesting little factoid from the uh, from the data on this. Uh, they had the luxury version or the nice version of the 1.1 was the SX, and it did come with air conditioning. Unfortunately, that rather affected the zero to sixty time. You got to guess that with a 1.1 liter motor with the AC a- on. with the AC on. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I'm assuming double digits. Oh well, in two, yes. <laughs> uh, was it like eighteen seconds? Seventeen point two. Oh, I was I was close. All right, not bad, not a bad guess. So that is so uh, th- slow. That is so it's so slow. That's like my like ninety four uh, Chevy S ten was back in the day. Like, <laughs> oof. But um, yeah. The the gist of this whole thing was get a Yaris. Yeah, I mean, so at the That's... very end, I mean, last episode or maybe it was two episodes ago, I don't remember. They were talking about their favorite small cars, and it was, you know, either a Honda Jazz, which is a fit over here, or a Toyota Yaris, which is, I believe, just a Yaris over here. Um, mm-hmm. And they said ultimately, you know, uh, did they say the Yaris had free insurance as well? Uh, I think they did, yeah. Yep. So the Yaris had free insurance, plus it was better and uh, not uh, French, more <laughs> more reliable than a French car. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. That was that was the crux of it. Um, a few things that I thought was funny on this is it was a brand new car. It cost seven and a half thousand pounds. Uh, well, there was already a five hundred dollar rebate on it, or five hundred. Yeah, immediately. Rebate. Just like right out of the gate, like, all right, why don't you just cost it at seven thousand pounds? But I guess no. having something be rebated is better than not. It's probably better on the tax side, I'm guessing. Um, but and it's I don't know. It seems weird from the selling side, but it's there's got to be some corporate benefit. Yep, and then uh, the, I thought it was funny that this little itty bitty car had a split tailgate. I, I wrote down before yeah. he got to it a second time that Jeremy's gonna love that because Jeremy loves that uh, because of the Range Rover. And then later on, he says it's got a split tailgate just like a Range Rover. And I'm like, yeah, yep. yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Bing bang bong. So are you looking at a picture of this car, Jeff? Uh, I am not. Should I pull one? up? Yeah, pull one up real quick. And I want to. I have a question to ask you about. The design of this, um, I'm looking just at the the main picture here on a Wikipedia page, uh, mm-hmm. which makes it nice and free use, fair use. Um, but look at the line, the bottom line of the window, the passenger, I guess that that's the driver side uh, door window, and how it doesn't meet up with the at rear all? window, like with the yeah, distinctly Behind, yeah. made a decision not to meet up. Yeah, what do you think about that? I don't like. I I don't know if I would have immediately said oof uh, without looking at it or without you pointing it out but uh yeah it's definitely i don't know what line they're trying to follow there because everything else lines up pretty nice like you got the wheel arches that kind of flow nicely into the uh the body line into the hood and all that up front looks like there was some thought there and then you get behind the driver's door and you're like oh uh, i guess we need a window yeah there's this color color one on (laughs) distinct line that runs from the bottom of the fog lamp curves up around the wheel arch right along the headlamp and the hood line and that flows right into the bottom of the door and then (laughs) (laughs) then it gets ruined by the the rear windows way big window i just don't understand why they did that i mean it's just a really uh i guess there's seats back there but do you really need like two or three more inches of visibility for those people Probably not. They want to be able to. See, they want to be able to see the road lines. Make sure the drivers keeping it keeping it tidy between them. If they're, uh, it's when they're doing their their scrub angle tests. They need someone to look out and make sure they're on the line. Yeah, I just thought that was no. interesting because I noticed that right away. Yeah, interesting. Okay, I, I can see it for sure. That is, uh, it's I mean, off, it's not a it's terrible off, looking car, but I, that particular aspect, ugh. I find it off putting. I feel like yeah. just make the lines line up, and it makes it look a lot more <laughs> sleek. It looks jagged and rough on the backside. Yeah, it looks like they just mushed together two different cars. <laughs> just it's like, like oh, we got to put a back on it. It's we like ran out of design money. It's like when you're cutting paper with scissors and you get to that point where you have to stop and reopen the scissors and then keep cutting again, <laughs> but you cut completely off the original line, so it's you all jagged. While you're doing it, <laughs> that's what the C two looks like. That's my Jeremy yeah. Clarkson analogy. All right, good analogy. On to the news. Yes. Yes, I got a couple things here. Um, Jeremy is hilariously pro Ford in this one. I kind of liked. I mean, it's tongue in cheek, obviously, but I liked some of it. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not like he's not gonna get one. I mean, I suppose yeah. if he's completely outwardly, totally anti Ford, but he's gonna buy their car. It's like made for TV marketing. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised they only sent a hundred and one over there. I mean, what they said, they had a couple thousand entries. Yeah, people twenty five hundred entries, I think. I guess most of them were spoken for over in the States already. 
I guess so. Now I'm curious who else got one. I didn't look at that list. I'm sure it's uh, yeah, some of the big wigs over there. But... Yeah. Yeah, but he's uh he's trying to make sure that everyone at Ford is gonna see him as a positive Ford brand ambassador, I suppose. Mm-hmm. And so he's got Ford on the bottom of his boots and he's talking up all the old all the Ford cars. Ford Mondale, great car. Great, great car. Like yeah. the C Max, like the Focus, yeah. like the Fusion. Exactly. Uh, I do like it's funny that like cause that car gives him nothing but trouble, and I, it's it's hilarious. Like he's fighting watching the genesis of it. He's fighting so hard to get it, and it's just yeah. gonna be his bane and his his beast <laughs> of burden soon, soon, Jeremy, soon. Good times, good times. Uh, they did mention it sounds like this was right around the time when they first did a, a ban on uh, mobile phones in the UK, which was funny that they banned talking but not texting. Yeah, because you guys, you guys got that backwards. That, it turns out texting's way worse because it takes but exactly texting, as much exactly as much brain power to do, but yeah. way more visual power to do. Yeah, <laughs> you got to look at it. Yeah. Um, it was still pretty new back in that time. I could see, I could see it being less of a thing, but uh, like this is pre iPhone days. But yeah, yeah I, I guess texting really exploded with the smartphones. Yeah, when it was uh, yeah a lot. Keep more. your conversations uh, like, and stuff like that. Uh huh, and it, you don't have to hit uh, this, the number keys just over and over and over. <laughs> I mean, I guess ultimately, but you know, back when you had those, you know, the Nokia bricks and stuff like that, you could yeah. you could text just without looking because you could feel the buttons. True, like I you could, could probably I, knock that out once you get the once you get the hang of it. Yeah, you right, tap 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 tap. You know, it's like Morse code. You don't even have to look at your hand anymore. But once you get a touch screen with no feedback and no positioning relative to itself. Then you have to look to type, but at the same time, if you're not good at the like doing that, it's just so much more like just look at the phone. Okay, I got hit this one three times, and this <laughs> one three times. Like it's got to be just way. There's there's definitely like a chasm of people that are just garbage at that. <laughs> so yeah, those people weren't texting back then, I suppose. I know I was. They were just starting to. There's one thing here in the news, Jeff, about. Uh, insurance companies using lie detectors over the phone? Over the phone. Yeah, I thought that was weird. I listened to that whole segment and I said, oh, they're just making it up. It's like, oh, no, we totally have a lie detector here. We've got the police here and they're listening, so don't lie. You know, <laughs> make <laughs> yeah. sure you tell the truth. There's a lie detector on. Or we're yeah. going we're gonna to come put your grandma in jail. <laughs> your phone is uh, checking your pulse right now to, to see if we can find any abnormalities, and we have a camera on your eyeballs to see if your pupils dilate. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, no, I don't think that's true. No, you don't, insurance companies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's move on to some Fren- more French cars, Jeff. Ah, French. Uh, these ones, I feel like, t- I mean... This, this, Richard didn't like them. He didn't hate them, but he was like, they're they're fashion statement, and I just completely agree. I absolutely hate the way that a lot of these uh, these hard top convertibles look. They they sacrifice so much to have a hard top convertible. Yeah, is there any uh, car that has done it well? Maybe some of the Mercedes. I think there are a few that don't look that bad. And of course, like you got a few supercars that do it all right, or like at least like higher end sports cars. Like the R8, I think has one, uh, and it does not look bad. Yeah, but... I, I suppose I suppose those cars never try to have trunk space, so they don't yeah. also try to have this big old fat ass hanging off the backside. <laughs> yeah, it's so tall, and so it's, it makes the car so butt heavy, and it's just ugh. Yeah. Um, ah, yeah, when I, I sold a Miata a couple years ago to a guy who had a G6, uh, the hardtop convertible, and it just, yeah, he, like, met me in, at a parking lot with that thing, and it was just, oh, the proportions are just wrong. It just looks like they were, yeah, they tried to, like, like what they did with the bug when they had the, um, this, this is, at least, they're, they're just acknowledging a, a convertible takes a ton of room. Like, a convertible yeah. top is going to be this weird wart on the back of it. So we'll just put a tonneau on it and be like, look at this weird thing back here. Whereas these guys are like, no, we'll hide it. And by hide it, you mean, you mean we're just going to make the back way bigger than it needs to be. Yeah, I mean, this car is enormous, and it's a two-door coupe with zero room in the back. Yeah. Like, it's the size of a 5 Series, and you can fit <laughs> yeah. maybe two people and look bad. Yeah, Oh. Uh, they, er, er, um, Hammond did have some good uh, quotes. He did say at one point that they were... Well, for one thing, they are achingly fashionable. Achingly fashionable is an yeah. odd phrase to turn. It makes sense. And I, I, totally I wrote that agree. one down too, saying, this is weird. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, it seems like they were exact same price point, right around 18 grand, right around 140 horsepower out of a two liter. Yeah. Um, so it's not that they're fast. They're not, they're middle of the road price wise. And uh, yeah, they just, they seem like the convenient, I don't know, purse of the time for <laughs> old white ladies. I mean, what is the draw of a hard top convertible? I actually had a, uh, a coworker down in, when I lived in Houston, Texas, that had a G6 as well. And I mean, in that neck of the woods, a convertible seems pretty nice. It's like Southern California. You got a lot of sunny. You got a lot of warm days to open it yeah. up. But what is the draw of a hard top convertible over a non? Because it almost always looks weirder. Mm-hmm. It always and or almost always reduces your trunk space over a regular convertible. Obviously, yep. over a non convertible. Yep. Is it is it any more weatherproof? I it's I think it's because I mean your your typical like convertible top does have somewhat of a life like Miata tops get replaced S two thousand tops get replaced um and uh, so that that could be part of it they are it's usually well it can be power versus manual so you know sitting in the car and pushing a button and it disappearing versus like having to get out undo the latches and fold it back and secure it down and all that um, in terms of like. Any, I, maybe it's a little like warmer or cooler, more insulated. But uh, I've daily a Miata in the winter here, and it was not that bad. I mean, it's it's just not that cold. Like you still got enough insulation there that with the heater and a tiny cab, it's not a problem. It's a small car; it heats up fast. Exactly. Yeah, not a lot of not a lot of air in there. You can just overpower the outside. Yeah, <laughs> just brute force, Mother Nature. <laughs> you uh, mother nature <laughs> uh i don't know i really don't get it apparently some people like it more i'm not in that particular yeah. niche i don't i don't ever see a situation where it performs better or looks better than a convertible that being said i would probably not be in the market for an like an actual car i don't i know i love the gallardo spider but i would never actually own a convertible unless money was not an option and so i'm not i'm not the target market for these cars anyway but yeah. uh uh, I don't ever see why I would have that over even a powered cloth top. I feel like if they look better with a powered cloth top, a uh, VW Eos, they're not terrible. It's a little, it's a little shorter in the back. It still kind of has that like overly long boot area. That's like, mm, you're something's going on, but I think they did a better job of it. Yeah. I mean, I suppose. It, yeah. It's hard, but I, yeah, I mean, it's all, it's kind of unmistakable. Like they're the shape, the shape of the yeah. roof is extremely noticeable. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I, there's a lot of a lot of sacrifices for what I would say is not a particularly good gain. Yeah, ultimately, I feel like this review was Richard Hammond's brief and dark review on modern <laughs> consumer culture. Like it's it got taking it to societal it, t- term. Yeah. It really got dark at the end. Like, isn't it makes Dead. me sick? You see one of these cars, you want it, then you get it, and for a while, you're glad you've got it. Then in about a year, when you've pressed all the buttons and all the gizmos have gone were, you'll be bored with it. But it doesn't matter, because by then, something else will come along. And do you know what? It makes me sick just thinking about it. That's <laughs> what he said. It was hilarious. I'm like, whoa, whoa, buddy. You know you're yeah. on a consumer vehicle show, right? <laughs> the next car you, the the very next car that you personally test is a 313,000 pound Mercedes. <laughs> if you wanna, if you wanna turn your nose up at consumer culture, then you probably need to take a back seat. Yeah, yeah. But they didn't put either around the track, so I think that's about enough time for those. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm glad that none of the French ones went around the track. They would have been slow and wobbly. <laughs> so, Jeff, I don't know who Sanjeev Baskar is. Nor do I. I googled him. Um, oh, I had one thing that I that like he had a very. Uh, he was recently on Drunk History. Oh, okay. So a couple he's... years ago. All right, all right. I like yeah, Drunk so History. Drunk History is worth. I do watch. too. That was yeah. That was one, and then he was in one more that I had seen, but it was like in such a. Uh, he was in Notting Hill as loud men in restaurant. <laughs> uh, yeah. So he um he's obviously definitely a uh, a very British actor that does not stray too much from the island. No, no, not really. He's very. I mean, he's got an OBE, so he's obviously been doing it long enough and is and famous enough. I guess he's been what it says active since 1991. I just mm-hmm. I just never came across a show where he was in it. I've never I've never saw him in anything. He was in 
some sketch comedy shows, Goodness Gracious Me and The Kumars at number 42. Yeah. Nope. Now, I just never came nope. across him. So I guess my, my path and his never, never really met um, in my brief, extremely brief time in the United Kingdom. Um, but, you know, I thought his interview was funny. I thought uh, he, he seems like a relatively funny guy. I liked his trench coat. He did. He was wearing almost. <laughs> he was, he was awesome almost wearing an old western duster. You know. He was. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I agree. Uh, his interview was good. He talked about buying his first car at auction uh, accidentally, which I have some experience with. Uh, and it's a Morris Marina, which is just one more. Nice <laughs> that's that's just a Top Gear car through and through. Uh-huh. He, they were commenting. Jeremy was talking about, uh, and this this is a flash forward to the. Uh, much begrudged India special, but they're talking about how extremely and unbelievably dangerous it is. Yeah, to drive or to be around roads over in India. To be around roads. I mean, I, I, I feel like a lot of the accidents have to be car on pedestrian, right? So it's oh, yeah. the actual being around roads that's a problem, right? Yeah. At the time, what was was it? One hundred and eighty-four um, a day. Okay. Was that the that was the amount of people that? Uh, that, that died. Is it 184 a day? It was something like that. Um, it's uh, that might yeah, be a, that might be a little high. Maybe it's like a month or a week or something like that. But 184 a day is a lot because oh, they I said, think it's I think it's higher now. Oh well, he said that uh, it's about the same that's in the UK, but they have the same amount of cars, but like a billion people. I mean, not like okay. a billion, like well over okay. a billion. So there's some there's some correlation to the UK, like same amount of cars, same amount of drivers, and same amount of, uh, but way more deaths or something like that. I'm not sure. All right, I got to do this math real quick because this number is huge. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> this data is from, uh, dude, dude, 2015. Okay, so three years ago. Yeah, and this was uh, yeah, this is a traffic related death rate. Okay, so I would assume that was. Car on your own, car versus car, and then car versus some other mode of transportation or not. I believe so, yeah. I don't, there's, yeah, because it does say it counts motorcyclists, uh, cyclists, pedestrians, so anything related to, uh, yeah, to a a road. Being around roads in India, okay. Yeah, so uh, you got to guess, okay, never mind, this is actually 2013 data. Um, You got to guess at the daily rate. I'm just taking it as an average right now. Daily rate of people dying. Presumably it's more than 184. (laughs) Yep. Okay, like uh, 300. 653. Oh, my God. That's... Yeah, 238,000 people died in 2013. Okay. What is that in the United States? Ooh, let's see. It's going to be in the same list. Um, United States is... There it is. Uh, 34,000. 34,000. So we are six, seven times less? Or yeah, more, so ni- ninety three a day here. Ninety three a day. Now I wonder how that that, that all correlates with like uh, population stuff. We can get too deep into the weeds here, but anyway, I think it's it's pretty obvious. Like that's a lot of people dying every day. It's ex- it's extremely dangerous to be on <laughs> yes. or around the roads in India. Let's just go ahead and say that. Yeah. Um, so watch out if you're in India. You know, listening yeah. to this. Hello, welcome, and uh, be careful. You know. <laughs> yes. Siri. Oh man, in India, 2016, 17 deaths on roads every hour. Which actually is less than what I just said, so I don't know. This, this data is probably all over the place, but that's a lot of dying. Ooh, that's bad. I did like the analogy, though, when he was talking about driving at night and how they didn't want to use lights because they might wear them out. <laughs> and he'd see one light coming, and he's like, well, I don't know if that's a scooter or if that's a car with one headlight out. And then it was like his brother or his cousin that was like, could be two scooters carrying a wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> also also that. with one of them with one other lights out yes yes yeah. i laughed at that but it's that not good... it's not untrue it sounds like they both kind of went well yeah you know it could be yeah i guess so. a scooter I... with yeah another scooter and a wardrobe <laughs> um and just some of the code things like the might is right the bigger vehicle just has the right away yep just you get out of my way why yeah because well, i'll rent i'll hit you as a as a bus owner yeah. sweet but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh yeah, but other than that, uh, one fifty one five in the wet, which is pretty fast. That's ex- I mean, they they called it wet. They 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 tried to decide between damp and wet, but it a was one, borderline. A one fifty one is a one forty seven. So he's up there like with Simon yeah, Cowell. With Simon Cowell, yeah. That's it's bat faster than Jody Kidd and J.K. So that's an extremely fast time. Another one of those laps that you can just watch and say that he's not getting crazy at all. But he's really pushing the extremely uh, noticeable. He's pushing the tires to the limit. And that's Definitely. pretty much 
where the car is at. It seems like 147, maybe a little bit faster with multiple laps or something like that is about as fast as this car is going to go. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I don't remember what the what, what they peak out at with the Liana, but it's not much past this. Yeah. I think Simon Cowell is up there for quite a while. I think he is too. Yeah. Let's talk about a sweet old car, Jeff. Yeah. Now, this is uh, the Vantage, not this one, but an old Vantage, is one of my favorite uh, Aston Martins. But this is a 1977 Aston Martin Vantage. V8 Mm -hmm. Vantage. Still called V8 Vantage. And boy, when you just take a quick glimpse at it, Jeff, does it look like an old Mustang. It does. Yeah, (laughs) it has just, that thing has muscle car written all over it. It is a British muscle car. Uh, they called it "quote unquote" Britain's first um, super car, super right? car, which I mean, okay, sure, I suppose. I don't know where mm-hmm. that comes into, um, but it's got some uh, uh, some interesting. I believe the engine that they showed is a Lagonda, right? Yeah, engine. yeah, it shared it with a Lagonda. It's a, they both use a five point three liter V eight. It's got the. Uh, it's actually wrote. I think it said it on like the the valve covers and stuff. Um, yeah, <laughs> just grab the Lagonda when we're like, ah, oh, put it in there. Yeah, but it's, we didn't uh, have time to change it. They cranked it up a little bit here. I'm reading here that it, it high performance yeah. cams, up the compressor ratio, uh, bigger carburetors. Yep, double R's. <laughs> uh, but uh, they they commented that at the time, I guess in 1977, this was the world's fastest production car. I'm not sure in what stat, but they uh, uh, if it's a top speed or if it's like zero to sixty or something like I that. I think it's zero to sixty because this one I did read that it'll beat a Daytona. Uh, it was only by like a tenth of a second, but it will beat a Daytona to sixty. Tenth of a second is a tenth of a second, man. Yeah, man, it's not nothing. Yeah, exactly. Um, but Jeff, even though we've gotten into this, I wanted to stop us early and say that first of all, it seems as though a little bit more production money has been given to the show because they've been jamming in some relatively well-known songs yeah okay uh, i haven't really noticed but so okay. at the very start of i believe it was the reno and peugeot cc review they started playing the beginning of biggie smalls hypnotize okay and then and then during this review they played what might be my least favorite song of all time Ooh. And my and our good friend Matt, uh, my old roommate Matt, <laughs> knows this, and he would play it for me all the time. But it's the Puff Daddy cover of Led Zeppelin's "Cashmere." Ooh, yeah, "Cashmere," <laughs> one of the best rock and roll songs of all time. But when and he didn't even change very much. Like no, he, he just sampled it. And but I just I hate, I hate it. If I'm not mistaken, that's on the Godzilla soundtrack, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely is on the guts of a soundtrack. All right. But so, you I mean, so far in this song, they've had a Biggie Small song and then a Puff Daddy song. They, they're they throwing out some pretty good licensing cash. They're flexing. They're, <laughs> they're winding us up. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. That's good. That, uh, I mean, you can see it a little bit in the produ- in the, the, the cinematography side. Um, I mean, they're very stuck on their, like, just kind of focus – drifting focus uh, shots right now but everything is getting smoother and cleaner yeah yeah and, and they're getting some better music i remember i commented i think it was season two that it's like we've heard this song like maybe Same seven song. or eight times yeah but now they're really branching out and getting some real songs in there now that being said i don't know how whitewashed our american amazon feed is of this we watch all these on amazon True. uh free on amazon prime not affiliated with this podcast in any way um but I know a lot of times, especially like in the specials where they say cue the music and they play the A team music, it's not the A team music in the United States. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe they covered whatever they played there with Puff Daddy's Cashmere <laughs> cover. Uh, <laughs> What's the cheap song? That one. <laughs> What's the worst song ever? <laughs> well, you get this one for twenty five cents. All right. Let's uh, maybe they maybe they long conned you. They were like, "What's this guy gonna hate in a while?" <laughs> God. Oh my god. Oh my god. I just wanted to say that I really don't have any much else put down about this, even that on, um, although I'll say it is a, it is a sleek looking car. Um, mm-hmm. but it's, it, it's, it's, it's definitely like seventies big. It's, Oh yeah. It's got a little, I think it's, it's all got, muscle. It's gotten a little bit of the, the, even though it's a pure British car, uh, it's gotten a bit of the, uh, the American just start. Things are starting to get big. Yeah. 
in every dimension. It's wide. It's long. It's got a big old big long engine. bonnet. It's got bold, you know, hood bulge on it. It just looks big. It does not look as as crisp and sporty as you know even oh, the DB7. Um, <laughs> but the modern Astons, they've definitely gone away from big muscle cars and turned them into you know sleek, really pretty muscle cars. Yeah. Should we get to our power lap of the episode? Yeah, I really wish they'd put this around, but uh, after the yeah, it would be awesome. I wonder who it owns who owns this one, but um, it's nice to see that they're getting some older cars too. Like they're just having them for fun and like having not production samples, but uh, but it's like private collection cars. You know what, Jeff? I'm going to stop you. I do have one of their bullcrap offshoot segments. Yeah, around the computer. Uh, the Chrissy Prezies. The- <laughs> 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 yes, that's exactly why I wanted to bring it up. But I wrote that down too. Yeah, I, I what I wrote down is stop saying Chrissy Prezi. No one says <laughs> Chrissy Prezi. Nobody in the earth says that. Um, they were talking about the bumper dumper, which will make its glorious comeback in the first uh, on location special, wherein they go to the North Pole. Oh in yeah, the Hiluxes, and I think it's only like eight or nine seasons from now. Um, but the bumper dumper, it's the toilet seat with a lid, which is hilarious. It's still got a lid on it that you put on, uh, put in your trailer hitch and then you can take a crap right off the back of your car. It's 35 pounds at the time, which seems expensive, but, uh, 50 with the, with the holder, wasn't it? With the TP holder? Was that, oh, it's was an that... optional extra. I think it might be. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, they went through a couple of Chrissy Prezies, Jeff. Um, but I thought it was funny that they got to the NASCAR sofa. They really yeah. don't know anything about it because Jeff Gordon is almost as big as it gets. Besides, like he's Jeff Richard, Gordon, Richard Petty, and like Dale Earnhardt. Yeah, I don't know. I'd put him right that right up there with Earnhardt. And like in this era, Jeff Gordon would have been huge. I mean, in this era, Jeff Ern- Dale Earnhardt was still alive. So true. I think true. I don't think he I don't think he eclipses Earnhardt, but he's close. Yeah. He's close. Similar level of prestige. But, uh... Oh, God, that thing was ugly, though. <laughs> it was it was expensive, too. Oh 1,300 pounds, isn't it? Oh, my God. Yeah, oof. That, that's all I want to say. I just wanted to bring up Chrissy Prezies. I don't... I've never heard the words <laughs> Chrissy Prezzy, but though have I. it might sneak its way into a few conversations. Yeah, it's going to have to go. I'm a, yeah. Mary Chrissy, here's your Prezzy. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Chrissy, I didn't get you any Prezzy. <laughs> All right, now we can go to our hot lab, Jeff. All right, hold it in, Manara. We're going to hit him with the segment sound once again. <laughs> I really need to take a recording and just do one episode where it's just you going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So this is uh this is a GTO. It's a Pontiac GTO, which is funny because it's actually no, the GTO is a Monaro. Like this is always a Holden t- from the get go. Yeah, it's interesting because you know, I I obviously have an extremely American centric view on this, and so I assume that the uh whatever the Chevy or whatever the American make model it is, everyone else is copying off of that. But it makes sense that an international corporation corporation like Vauxhall. Uh, or like GM, who has Vauxhall and Opel and Holden, would develop cars in set, uh, separate markets and then crossbreed them, not just from the United States. Yeah, I was being extremely jingoistic nationalist and thinking, <laughs> no, 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 no. We made the GTO and then gave it to everybody else. Not that that's a good thing. <laughs> all, all is told, but yeah, obviously Holden and Opel and Vauxhall and. You know, all those companies are going to develop cars, and then GM's going to be like, oh, okay, GTO, baby. Yep. Uh, this one was kind of an interesting, because it's not entirely Australian. I mean, it, it came to market with an LS1. Well, yeah, I mean, that's just the availability. Hey, we want a big engine in this. How yeah. about a Corvette engine? Okay. Yeah. Done. <laughs> we we got one of those. <laughs> we got a bunch of those. Yeah. Uh, relatively, I mean, it seems like a decent price point. I'm still kind of, my, my pounds to dollars is not perfect, but 28,000 pounds. Yeah, for, but uh, th- at the time, I, I don't have, at the time that seems a little high. I think that's probably more than what you would have paid for a GTO here. Yeah. Yeah. That, it seems like that's kind of the case over there. Yeah. Um, 342 horsepower, zero to 60 in six and a half seconds and uh, top speed over 160. So it's no, no slouch. 
No, I mean it's got a Corvette engine in it. It's probably a bit heavier than a Corvette, but it's yep. still got it's got the balls, you know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Jeremy called it a hooligan special, and uh, and I think it compared it to a uh, a drunk XKR. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. If you say so, man. Um, but yeah, I mean this this car has a following over here still. It's a cool car, rear engine or rear uh, rear wheel drive. Um, they did make a four wheel drive version that never came to the states, which is kind of a bummer because that would have been fun. It doesn't really go with the GTO moniker, though. Not at all. But no. I mean, yeah, I did like too that they actually had GTO badging on it. It was not like rear badging, but it was like front sill badging. Yeah, which was odd, but okay. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a sub model there. Uh, yeah, they had. I don't have a lot. Of, I mean, they they had a couple versions. The one they put around the track was the uh, the lower horsepower of the two, because eventually this one got a six liter, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the GTO at least. Okay. And they they had some hotted up versions that went for a decent amount more. So we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, the lap looked pretty decent. It looked. It looked. Uh, it looked a lot better than I would expect out out of what looks like an American car. I mean, essentially, yeah. you know, Australian cars are very similar in size and 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 attributes to American cars. Big, not the best handling in the world. Like, you know, mm-hmm. if you've ever seen uh Love the Beast with uh, Eric Oh Dana, yeah. Oh yeah. They're, they're a little bit skittish around the corners, but um this one looked like it held its own. It was extremely wet on its lap. Yeah, it was. Um and even then, I mean, it put down a 133 point Oh, where did it go? 133.9, yeah, so yep. corrected a, a 129.9, which, uh, not bad. Yeah, um, it, uh, one thing I'd like to say, uh, oh, sorry, yeah, we'll, we'll get to the top gear, top gear rear view power rankings, uh, but one thing I would like to say is that, um, the faster version is way more expensive. Oh, man, yeah, it was more than twice as much. Yeah, it was or, from 28,000, yeah, 28,000 to, to 70,000 pounds. Oof. So, uh, that being said, it's, it's, it's really fast. <laughs> it's zero yeah. to 60 in four seconds. It's yeah, it's that's, that's the big jump that surprised me. It was like, I mean, zero shaving two and a half seconds off a of zero to 60 time is crazy. Well, apparently it's worth 32,000 pounds. Yeah. Four, I mean, it's a hundred horsepower, but wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it reminded me how much I hate the XKR because <laughs> it's just an ugly car. It is. It's, it's not that great. Uh, Jeff, one thing I noticed from this, uh, we talked about it in our Saab review, 9.5 review, a couple weeks ago. Um, but I commented on the cup holders. Like, hey, did you see those sweet cup holders like pop out and swivel? Yeah, well, apparently, ones. apparently that's just a GM off-the-shelf part because this one had it yeah. too. Had a couple of them. I was like, oh, I thought that was a Saab <laughs> thing. That's a GM nope. thing? Oh, probably <laughs> broke then, didn't it? <laughs> They're all broken. You can find broken ones in junkyards around the country. <laughs> so, hey, so uh, do we want to call this wet or very wet? I don't think it was currently raining, so I'm leaning towards wet. Yeah, I think they officially called it wet. Um, I'm going to see if I can find the uh, the official ranking on the, the page real quick. One second. They call it wet. Okay. All right. So a ninety three point nine. Sorry, a one thirty three point nine in the wet brings us down to a one twenty nine point nine. So just under the one thirty mark, uh, which is reasonable. Uh, faster than RX eight and a three fifty Z by about a second and a half. Yeah, it's uh, it puts that up against. I'm trying to see what's come up so far. There's a lot of older ones. Um, we got uh, the Ascari AS one is actually not too far off. That was in series one, all uh, the way back then. It was about as fast as the Z eight. Alpina. Yeah, and uh, the WRX STI in Series 2, Episode 6. That was uh, 210 slower. There we go. So what would you do, Jeff, for a desirability on this car? I'd probably give this a 6. You give it a 6? Yeah, I mean, it's got um, all of the hallmarks of a a car that I like. It's got yeah. the best engine GM has. And one of the best, I mean, it's, it's relatively ho-hum, the body style, but it's not bad. And it's not, uh, you know, it's not uh, SSR bad. No, oh, oh. I saw one of those this weekend at the Roadster Show, which yeah. I put up on Facebook. If anyone's looking, yeah, Jeff uh, saw. You saw the new Ford GT, didn't you? I did. It was pretty. It cool. looked so, really nice. Um, oh, that's carbon wheels, man. Oh, Jesus. So it's got, uh, it's got the best of most of the worlds from GM. So I agree. I like it a little bit less, but I'm going to go with, uh, I think I'm going to go with a six as well, Jeff. I, I think that's a good score. 
All right, so you know there is a a version that we will see in ten series, the Malu, uh, <laughs> where they make it a Ute, and that one is going to get a higher score for sure. Because I love that. Absolutely car. going to get a higher score. <laughs> I, I mean, it, love that car. It, it distinctly changes the body style, but it makes it way more practical, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> so much more room for activities. All right, so uh, put it into the TGR Power Rankings list here. It got a score of 107.4. Um, just to let you all know, we're averaging 100.7. So if essentially if it's above 100, we it's a good car. If it's below 100, it's not, um, which is good enough for 12th place, Jeff. Not bad. That's pretty good, I would say. Yeah. Uh, that puts it uh, right behind the Honda NSX Type R. And right ahead, just ahead of the Lamborghini Murcielago, driven by New Stig, not Old Stig. No, <laughs> New Stig is proper Stig. That's right. Uh, now, interestingly enough, in a couple series, we do see the Monaro again in the Vauxhall uh, uh, guise. And uh, I believe this one is a slightly tuned out version, but uh, time's not too different. So stay tuned for that in a couple series. All right. Uh, and I just have one more note about the TGR power rankings. I have implemented uh, currency inflation. So everything is going back to this 2002 BMW M3. So hopefully we can continue to have uh, even scales all the way through um, uh, adjusting for inflation. It did not change the rankings of anything. So everything, right. it didn't well, change it very much yet. All right. There we go. All right, so uh, yeah, that right of a wrap set for the Monaro. It's uh, waiting for the Malou. Love the Malou. Yeah, I can't wait for the Malou. So we do have, I guess, the second half of our Hilux challenge here. Yeah. So in my mind, these are all jammed into one because yeah. there's like this big, long, glorious segment in the last episode where they run into trees and jam it into the ocean and set it on fire and whatnot. And then there's also this one other thing. I thought this was all one thing. I did too. I co- I totally forgot that uh, they split it up between it and then split it up in the episode. But um, yeah, this one I think got a little less of a do than it was worth. But yeah, a I mean, time that it was due. They. <laughs> It was awesome. All told, it was awesome. I really yeah. enjoyed it. But it continues to be awesome. <laughs> I I I I didn't agree. They kept like touting that it was going to be on top of the building falling down and and not underneath. Like no, no, no. We're not going to put it underneath. We're going to put it on top like it was more impressive. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not. Not at all. No. If you put it inside, it would be a pancake. <laughs> So I understand I, why they did it and I tried aim, to play it I up. I aim to be impressed, Jeff. And yeah, I wanted to see him try to start up a pancake. <laughs> I mean, engine blocks are stout, but I don't know if they can handle building crush. Yeah, I mean, I suppose not. Yeah, that was so, a pretty yeah. big building, and it was a pretty small pile afterwards. So Two hundred and forty feet. It was a big one. Yeah, twenty-four story. Uh, so yeah, that thing, like it, uh, they blew it up. It fell down. It was on top of a pile. A digger rolled it down. <laughs> yeah, unceremoniously. Like, yeah. what, you want this down? All right, fine. No, we're Got not it. filming a TV. Oh. <laughs> kabunk, kabunk, kabunk. What's that? I didn't hear you over the sound of destroying your car. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear you over the sound of cracking your chassis in yeah, half. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that didn't look too good. I mean, no. the uh, the front, there was a, there was a bit of, uh, oh, it's not toe. There's a bit of camber on the front wheels when they drove it in. <laughs> Just a bit, yeah. <laughs> and there was a hefty split in the frame. But uh, it seems like they didn't have to work very hard at all. They just put a battery in it. I mean, obviously, it makes sense that they didn't drop it with the battery. They yeah. put a battery in it, and it started right up. Like, it didn't. Yeah. it did not take much. This was way less impressive than the water one. Yeah, which I understand. I mean, the yeah. water one is, that's something. Especially, like, it's one thing, like, if they were just, like, we dropped it in the bottom of a pond and then pulled it back out. But it's like, no, we left it in the ocean for, like, six hours. <laughs> you see how full of <laughs> sand this thing is? Uh, no. So, yeah, this one is not quite as impressive, but still pretty damn impressive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, spoiler alert, it fires right back up. They drive it in, and then Jeremy says, we're going to put it on a plinth, which is what they do. As, as, I'm glad to see that they decided at that point that we're going to uh, display this thing in all its glory as for everything it's worth. I'm glad that that was decided. Yeah, yeah. There was uh, there was no other path for that. That needed to be put up, and, and yeah. 
Well, thus endeth the glorious story of the Toyota Hilux, Jeff. And also, thus endeth this episode. So, we appreciate you all for joining us today. This one was a bit of a quick one, but uh, they can't all be winners. Um, <laughs> the uh, If you guys want to get in touch with us, uh, you can email us at topgearreview at gmail.com or head on over to our Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash topgearreview, and uh, we can hang out and chat there. Jeff. Just posted up a bunch of pictures from, uh, what was it, the Boise Roadster show? Yes, sir. And uh, those are pretty cool. He sent me a picture via text. And I'm like, dude, you got to put this on Facebook. So go check yeah, that it's out. It's a new GT. I mean, it's a half million dollar Ford. Yeah, it looks pretty good. <laughs> looks pretty yeah, good. It's pretty nice. Yeah. So go ahead and check that out. And uh, if you're enjoying these, which we hope you are, uh, it always helps if you, you share it with a friend or uh, definitely if you uh, hop onto iTunes and uh, or I guess Apple Podcasts and give us a rating or review that helps keep us up in the ratings. Um, you can find us on all the all the podcatchers. So uh, your your venue of choice for that. So that about wraps it up for this episode. So on that note, we will see you back here next week for Series 3, Episode 7. <laughs>